Blessings, people of God. Uh, this is Christ the Entity Foundation coming your way once again with Touching the Heart of Reality TV channel. Uh, this is your brother Philip. Uh, we are here once again to bring to you the Word of God, to bring to you the counsel, the mind, and the wisdom of God through the Word of God. Uh, today we are here to teach you the Word of God, the unadulterated Word of God. Today we are here to uh, look into the word uh, that we titled Many are called but few are chosen Many are called but few are chosen uh, Before we proceed let us share a word of prayer Father we thank you we glorify your name Thou who sits upon the throne uh, Thou who ruleth even from the highest of the heavens we give you all praise. Thank you that you have brought us um, this far. We thank you for how far you have brought us. We thank you for everything that you continue to do in our lives. We thank you for your grace that you have also bestowed upon us. We thank you for your mighty hand that has also preserved us this far. Therefore, this moment we ask that you come and teach us, open our eyes, open the eyes of our understanding so that we can behold the truth that is in your word, so that we will walk in your knowledge, the wisdom of your Son, even our Lord Jesus. Therefore, beautiful Holy Spirit, we ask that you come and frontier the steer of the teaching this moment. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Even in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Uh, today we want to go into um, the word of God as we titled many are called but few are chosen and there are a lot of um, talk going out there that uh, there many are called but few are chosen as if it is our Lord that is biased toward us or it is our, our Lord that is not willing to choose us but let us um, quickly go into the word so that we know what the word of God says concerning um, that which said many are called but few are chosen. Uh, come with me quickly to the book of Matthew chapter 21 verse 1 to 14 as I read. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his and sent forth his servants to to call them for they were bidding to the wedding and they would not come again he sent forth other servants saying Tell them which are hidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage, and they made light of it, and when they are away, one of his farm another to his merchandise and the, and the remnant took his servant and entreated them pitifully and slew them but when the king heard thereof he was wroth and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burn up their city. Now oh, let's wait there. It says that the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. Now Jesus was trying to compare the kingdom of heaven unto a certain king that 
actually arranged a marriage ceremony for his son. Actually inviting men to come into the marriage ceremony. Now the kingdom of heaven has actually called men. God has actually called men into his kingdom. And we could see in the reading that they rejected that invitation that was given to them by the king. So meaning in the kingdom of God, many have been called to this ceremony. But it is this many that reject the calling that the Lord has given to his people even to come into fellowship with him. Praise God. Now let me continue from verse 8 as we proceed. It says, Then said he to his servant, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not ready. Now God has called us, he is ready, he has prepared his kingdom unto us. But many of us are not ready. Many of us have chosen the path of the will of man, the path of the flesh, the path of the devil, the path of unrighteousness, the path of unfaithfulness. That is the parable that our Lord Jesus gave to us. Praise God. He said, Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, be to the marriage. But now Jesus is summoning that, okay, I came to my people, which is the Jews. But since the Jews have rejected me, let us go out and seek the Gentiles also, so that the cutoffs that will believe on me might be chosen. Praise God. Now follow this teaching carefully so that we will have understanding of the word of God. So that it will not look as if it is because God failed to choose some of us that have been called. No. The Father has called all of us. He has actually called many. He has called all of us. But it is to them that have actually responded to the call that are chosen. Praise God. Now verse 10 says, So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. So it means whether you are bad, whether you are good, God has called you. God has called both the believer and unbeliever. He has called all of us. This is the parable that Jesus gave. That whether you are a Jew, you are a Gentile, you are a guy, you are never, whether you are a Muslim, whether you are a cut off, whatever, whatever you are, we all have been called. Even Paul said that in the book of Galatians. For the sake of time, let us stick to um, the book of Matthew as we proceed. From verse 11, as I read, it says, And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there are men which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how comest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then, the, then said the king to the servant, Bid him, bid him, it, it, no, it says, Then said the king to the servant, Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called but few are chosen it says for many are called but few are chosen 
Why? Because many are not prepared to walk in the kingdom of God. It means many are not actually prepared to walk according to the alignment of God. Because God is actually looking at people that are ready to respond to the call so that he might choose them that are ready. Just as he said, bind him hand and foot and take him away. But how can you be called to a ceremony? How can you be called to fellowship? Then you just go just like that, like normally. No. God is saying we must prepare ourselves and be in a garment. And that garment is not the dress we wear. The garment the Lord is talking about is not the clothes that we are supposed to wear. Now, what is the garment? That garment is the garment of our Lord Jesus Christ. The garment that is spoke about in the parable is the garment of our Lord Jesus. Now, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 to 12 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praise of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we have been called out of darkness into the marvelous light of our Lord. For what? To show the praise of our Lord. Now verse 10 says, which in, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. So it means we must abstain from fleshly lust, which war against our soul. These are the garments we need to do away so that we can put on a new garment, which is the garment of our Lord. The mind was bound, both foot and hand, and thrown into darkness because he brought into the kingdom of God the filthiness that was in the world. That is why men will be rejected by God. So for man to be accepted, it means man must be prepared in that garment of the Lord, which is the garment of grace. Now verse 12 says, Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you in evil doers, they may be your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. So it means man must actually be prepared and fortified in the Lord so that even if they speak evil against us because we are practicing the ways of the Lord at the appearing of the Lord we will not be a castaway so the garment is the garment of righteousness and holiness of God so we must do away the garment of filthiness, the garment of unrighteousness, the garment of unworthiness, so that we can put on a new garment, which is the garment of righteousness and holiness of our Lord Jesus. Now, Proverbs chapter 21, verse 21 says, He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, and also find that righteousness and honor. So it means we must turn away from the evil things and turn to the righteousness of God. It is in this that as we have been called, we will as well be chosen by our Lord Jesus. The Lord will never choose anyone who has not repented. He will choose them that have actually repented from the way of the devil, from the way of immorality, from the way 
of perversion. Praise God. Now Job 29 verse 14 says, I put on righteousness and it clothed me. My judgment was as the robe and a diadem. This is what Job said. He says, I put on righteousness. So that garment that the Lord spoke about in the parable is the garment of righteousness, which is the garment of our Lord Jesus. So it is not that many are called and few are chosen because the Lord decided to choose the few. But it is because of the few that have decided to put on the cloth and the garment of righteousness are them that are chosen because many are called. In fact, all of us are called. But the few that are chosen are them that are separated unto the Lord in righteousness and also in holiness. Praise God. Now, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21 to 24 says, If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. They say we have to put off the old man so that we can put on the new man which is in Christ, which is righteousness, holiness, that is the grace of our Lord Jesus. He said, put on Christ. That is what Paul said. Put on Christ. So this is a deliberate action that the believer must do in order to be chosen in the kingdom of heaven, even the kingdom of our Lord Jesus. Now verse 23 says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So it means in the mind we must deliberately be renewed that i want to serve god i want to be for god i will forever live for god i will forever stand with god in the mind we must deliberately make this cautious effort and it is in making this effort that god chooses us into his kingdom Verse 24 says, And that ye put on the new man, which is after God is created in the righteousness and true holiness. Amen. So you will see that, let me read it again. It says, And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So God has actually created the new man in righteousness and also in holiness so that we can be chosen because we have been called, we have been separated. He says we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. We have been made kings and priests unto God. We have been separated from unrighteousness and from all filthiness and all unholiness. And it is in this deliberate effort, it is deliberate because God will not make this choice for us. God will not come and force me to choose holiness for myself, to choose righteousness for my church, for myself. I choose it deliberately because I know it is only in the Lord Jesus that my salvation is secure. So if I need to secure my salvation, it will be my effort in believing that which the Lord has done, in walking in His holiness and also his righteousness so for we to be chosen we must put on that new garment by putting away the old garment so that the new garment will fit on us so that we will also be accepted in that ceremony in that wedding that fellowship that god is calling man into so that we can fit into the kingdom of God as he has called us and he will choose us to be a part of him. Praise God. So people of God, for God has, for many are called, but few are chosen, is because many garments are still filthy. Many garments have not still been changed. We can still be in the kingdom of God, but our our garment may be filthy. That is why we need to renew our mind so 
that every day we are transformed by the righteousness and by the holiness of God through the grace of our Lord Jesus. This will be difficult without the grace, which is the empowerment of the Spirit. So we need this grace so that we can walk accurately in the righteousness and in the holiness of God. So it is crucial for the believer to have that mindset which is a deliberate mind to walk in the holiness and also in the righteousness of God. So it is important for you as the child of God, for you as the believer to practice the holiness of God and also practice the righteousness of God through the grace of our Lord Jesus. Um, let us share a word of prayer as we believe that God will by all means choose us even as we practice His word, even as we will put away or we will put off the old garment so that we can put on the new garment. And Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We thank you. We ask that Father you empower us by your grace, by your spirit so that we can be able to walk with you in pure righteousness and in pure holiness so that we can be chosen among them that are called. Father we do not want to be called alone but we also want to be chosen into your kingdom. Therefore we ask for grace and empowerment. Enable us to walk with you side by side, having right standing with you, which is the righteousness that you gave to us even on the cross of our Lord Jesus. We ask, O oh God, that you continue to nourish us with your wisdom, counsel, purpose, so that we can find that which you will for our life, so that our life will have expression in your kingdom, so that through our vessels you can use us even in your kingdom. Therefore, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what you have also taught us. And let your Holy Son alone be praised. Be glorified, Father. And thank you, beautiful Holy Spirit. Even in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.